Hi friends, so I wanted to give another example of something that happened in relation to our view of our position on animals, how we view them, um, how we view them in a different way to say we do to human, human, human animals basically. Um, and I know you probably, you possibly if you follow this channel, Faint Signals from Vigor, you probably have seen my video about Suki the cat and how recently Suki the cat um, who's um, a particular breed of cat and who does a lot of adventures with the people that she is with. Um, well, she got sick recently and it looked like she was going to die and then she came out of it. And everybody, there was, uh, the, the, the account on Instagram has about a million three hundred followers and there was a whole lot of thousands and thousands of comments about people, how, how, how distressed they were at the thought of something happening to Suki. And of course, Suki's a lovely cat. It doesn't matter really if she's you know, to her, if she's bred or she's not bred, she's just a sentient animal, a sentient being who has um, has uh, likes and dislikes, individ individual personality, and so she just happens to be on the planet. And people have bred her into existence, and uh, she was sold to someone. Um, and and I'm totally, I I don't believe in the property status of animals as a vegan. And even though I believe in adopting and fostering animals, I don't believe in breeding them into existence to sell them. Um, I think we should uh, adopt and foster refugees of domestication because we created this awful mess for them. Um, and the reason I'm talking about this is because, um, sadly, I was I also follow this. There's only two really uh, um, cat accounts I follow on Instagram, and one of them is um, this little black cat called Makita, and uh, and their parents, uh, the the people, sorry, the people who look after Makita, uh, they. They um, recently adopted a um, this retired, if I can put it like this, retired Maine Coon female, um, and uh, it's really sad. I, like I say, it's really sad that people actually breed these animals, like Maine Coons and other purebreds, into existence, and then they they breed, they 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 have them mate, and then they sell the young for like I don't know how much this particular breeder was selling young for but I mean this uh, this cat that they adopted this cat that these two people adopted on this from this account um, of this Makita black cat account um, they 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 adopted this retired female breeder breeding um, cat and her name is Dahlia and so um, Dahlia is a very sweet cat you know she doesn't know that she's been you know highly bred or whatever and when they adopted this particular cat, Dahlia, they didn't know that the cat, um, when they came to pick her up a few, a couple of weeks after they sort of said, yes, we'd like to, we'd like to adopt this retired Maine Coon breeding cat, um, they, this cat had gotten pregnant in between that time and they didn't realize that when they got her home that she was pregnant until, until they sort of started noticing signs and then realized that she was pregnant. And so they'd actually adopted a cat who was pregnant and, and they'd actually intended to, to get her desexed. And, uh, but of course, you know, when they realized she was pregnant, they waited until this, uh, Dahlia had, had the uh, little kitten. So that kitten was born about three days ago. And, um, I always worry about highly bred cats because often they have really bad genetic issues because they're so inbred and highly bred. And Maine Coons have a sort of a, a very um, early mortality often. I think it's, I might be wrong on this, but it's like 90% of Maine Coons tend to die when they're around 10 years old because they have a sort of cardiomyopathy and they, you know, they can just drop dead, I think. They have heart issues. So it's, it's not great, you know. And so I was a little bit sad when I heard that um, this, these people, these very nice people too, who happen to look like they're vegan actually, they actually, uh, seem to be eating just plant-based foods and they talk about plant-based foods. So I'm happy that that's the case. I sort of think, well, great. You know, I didn't know, I didn't know when uh, I, I started following that Instagram account that these people appear to be vegan as far as I can tell. But anyway, um, so that's a, that's a good thing. But anyway, so they, they adopted this pregnant cat that they didn't know was pregnant. Then she had the little kitten about three days ago. And very sadly today, I look at, on their account and um, the little kitten had died, and, he, and the little kitten was only two days old. Um, hadn't even opened its eyes or done anything that cats do, and it, it and the little kitten died. I don't know what sex that kitten was. So, 
So that was very sad. And I sort of thought to myself, well, you know, I think the, you know, the mother cat only had one kitten. Um, she was a Maine Coon and she was sort of getting, the, I, I, I sometimes actually wonder whether the, the breeders or I had some suspicions that if she had or maybe even the, 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 the litter before, um, before this one, maybe um, it was only one kitten and maybe that kitten died and maybe they didn't let these two people know when they adopted her and uh but you know anyway i don't know what happened but anyhow the, the point i'm actually trying to make here really i'm getting around to it is that um you know it's very sad when that happens and it's and and obviously this little kitten had some sort of a genetic issue some sort of a problem that the mother picked up because the mother sort of started to kind of reject her and um they did everything they could they did all sorts of things to try and help her in this uh, last day in particular when they noticed she wasn't um she was she wasn't putting on weight so they, they're actually they were very responsible and they did everything they possibly could including taking her to an emergency vet clinic including getting um people's advice and um that were um adopt you know that looked after kittens uh, that were fostered and all this kind of stuff so they did everything humanly possible to try and make sure this kitten uh stayed alive and was healthy etc and unfortunately, that didn't work out. Anyway, the point I'm going to make here is that, once again, we have a situation where um, you see this great outpouring of, the, because they have about 27,000 people on their account. They don't have as many as Suki does, Suki the cat. Um, Chicago Black Cats has about 27,000 people, and they're really very sweet with their cats. Um, and it makes me sad that all the people on this account um, I'd say most of them are probably not vegan. And as I've said about Suki the cat in my video a few videos ago, that all the people who um, are so, were so upset about Suki the cat, they don't realize that the, the sentience that they see in Suki the cat and the sentience that they see in the Chicago black cats, the Makita and Dahlia, and then they saw in this little kitten, is the same sentience that all the animals that we have, um, that we use, that we eat, wear, and use, they are, it's the same sentience. There's no level of sentience. And if we had a relationship with those animals that we have, if we had a personal relationship with those animals that we had with the cats whom we love and whom we consider family members or the dogs whom we love and whom we consider family members, we would be vegan because it's exactly the same. All the animals that we eat, wear and use, the animals on our plates, 99% of the animals that we use today that we torture and kill the one trillion land and aquatic animals that we torture and kill every year. And yes, aquatic animals are sentient. Um, they all have sentience, just like Nikita the cat, just like Dahlia the cat, just like that sweet little kitten who didn't make it, just like Suki the cat, just like any of the dogs and cats whom we've lived with and whom we call family members and who we sometimes, uh, often people you'll see, are more distressed when uh, their beloved cat dies or when their beloved dog dies, or when they get sick, you see people are beside themselves with grief. And, you know, it, it's like it affects them even more, more so than when humans, um, hu humans die. It's just something that happens, and I think there's reasons for that, um, which I've talked about, uh, I've talked about before. Um, I haven't really talked about before, sorry, but um, reasons being that, you know, we live in a very disconnected society and I think that people actually get a lot of unconditional love from these sentient animals. Um, they're always pleased to see us pretty much most of the time. Uh, cats stay because they want to stay. They don't stay because they're locked into a yard. Cats are very, can be very loving when they trust you. And they, um, it's, 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 a, you know, it's beautiful interacting with cats and, um, dogs are the same, you know, dogs, there's this unconditional love and this sort of, a, a continual positive relationship. There's this continual positive relationship that we have with these animals that we unfortunately don't have in, in today's society where everything is so disconnected due to either neoliberalism, um, or whatever it is. I'd say, you know, it's the way it's been set up so that we are disconnected from one another and we can't actually get together and group together and actually organize against um, establishment forces that are trying to put their feet on our necks, basically. Um, so, you know, it's an intentional um, sort of destroying of communities um, through various means in neoliberalism um, and, and capitalism. 
uh, and just general, general, uh, yeah. So, you know, and, and sometimes social media. So it's like, um, but, but these relationships that we have as sentient animals that happen to be the ones that we fetishize, like dogs and cats, and there are other animals that we fetishize, but these are the ones that we've decided that we're going to have in our homes. Dogs and cats are the main ones in the West anyway. Um, they are, we've, we, we get this continual positive reinforcement and a, a relationship with these um, sentient animals who in many ways see us. They don't look at how we look or what we do or even what we say particularly. It's how we relate to them in nonverbal ways and even the tone of our voice and whatever. And they respond to that. Um, and it, it's a sort of a, a really kind of a clear and loving sort of a relationship. And I think that's why we are so devastated when something happens to these non-human animals because we, we, they are sentient and we're having this interaction with them, uh, which is with something, unfortunately, that we don't have the luxury of having with a lot of human beings today because of the disconnection. And also a lot of the niceties in society have been lost because we don't spend enough time around one another because we're so busy trying to survive, a lot of us, uh, particularly if you're in, uh, if you're people of color, um, trying to survive and make ends meet, and neoliberalism just keeps crushing people, austerity and all of that. You only have to see what's happening in France to see to see how fed up people are of um, austerity and so forth, and that's just going to get worse and worse. So that's you know, I think that's uh, why um, you know non-human animals. So it's such a huge industry now. The pet industry, um, it's a it's a billions and billions and billions of dollars the pet industry makes on people now because I think people are probably getting um, a lot of their mental health uh, deriving a lot of mental health from having close relationships uh, with these non-human animals. And the point I'm making here is that um, they're, they're sentient. But like I say, there's no difference in sentience with um, those animals, the ones we share our life with and, and are devastated when they uh, die or they're sick or somebody hurts them. And the animals on our plates like the sheep and cows and um, goats and pigs and chickens and so forth and fish and all of this. If we actually had and took, if we actually had, like you, you only have to ask people who work on these farm sanctuaries these animal sanctuaries where these animals happen to be lucky, they escape um, a slaughterhouse or they escape, a, um, and all farms, by the way, are abusive in one way or another, but just say there's a specific farm that's done something that um, some specific abuse or whatever, you know, and that these animals manage to be rescued from there. All, all farming, all animal use is abusive. Let's just get that out there. And there's no such thing as humane use of animals. And even if there were, it would still be wrong. But let's, you know, these sanctuaries that have these farm animals on them, any, you just ask anybody who owns one of those sanctuaries and ask them the sort of how they feel about these animals in the sanctuaries. And they feel exactly the same way that they would as we would with any dog and cat whom we live with because they have, have the opportunity, and I hope that they're vegan too, I hope that anybody who works at a sanctuary is at the very least um, as a minimum standard of decency that they're vegan and that hopefully they should be promoting veganism. That's not always the case, sadly. And sometimes these sanctuaries promote humane use of animals, which is really, I find really kind of obscene. But anyway, the, if you ask any of these owners of these sanctuaries, they will tell you that they, these animals, all of them have individual personalities, individual likes and dislikes. They love life and they don't want to die. And they have these amazing, um, they have these amazing relationships with these animals, just like the dogs and cats whom we carry on about and fetishize, right? And that's the case. And so if we, the only reason we think it's okay to eat, wear and use these animals is because we are trying to pretend like these animals are different from dogs and cats whom we absolutely love and adore, right? We try and pretend they're a different category. They're in a different universe to these animals, but they're not. They are sentient just like these animals that we love, whom we love. So, you know, this is the thing that we keep telling ourselves that these are different, that these are animals that we use. We, we've been indoctrinated to think that from birth. And every, everything in society tells us that they are here for us to use. Everything. Our friends, our family, our parents, 
you know, we're given all these mixed messages too, like when we're children. Oh, look, let's read this lovely little nursery story about this sweet little pig, you know, babe, you know, or whatever. All these little sweet little stories about animals on farms, as if farms are just places where pig, pigs and other animals have a lovely time. We all just, we all hear that when we're young, you know, these farm stories, but little nursery rhymes and stuff. And yet then we're sat down, our parents sit us down to eat these same animals that we've been reading about and, and feeling lovely feelings about in these stories. I mean, it's so messed up. And you'll often find children will, will push back against that and they'll say they, they get very upset at the thought of eating these animals on their plates. And of course, we don't even realize that the milk in our cups and the, the lattes and the cheese and the yogurt and all of that and the eggs are all products of tremendous violence and that these sweet little animals were also tortured and killed for that. I mean, male calves are killed by the millions by the dairy industry because they're byproducts of the dairy industry. They're no use to the dairy industry. Um, and, you know, so dairy cows are repeatedly uh, impregnated on what they call a rape rack. And then eventually, after about five years, they're killed too. And they, it's a dreadful thing. And I'll leave some information about what goes on in the dairy industry. And with egg, the egg industry, they, there's millions and millions and millions of chickens, little chicks of one and two day, days old thrown into grinders. They're ground up alive. And the, mother, the mothers are often just, you know, they, they just discarded into heaps and, uh, you know, basically suffocated in, you know, when they're no longer productive. Um, there's all sorts of awful things that happen in these so-called free-range farms and, and so forth. But I won't go into that. You can watch my videos, The hum Humane Deception and Humane What's in a Word. They're two videos I've done. One, one's a live stream that I did. Um, so I want you to, I'd, I'd like us all to just think about, you know, when I see things like what happened on the Chicago Black Cat, and I was really upset about that too. It's, it's really interesting how, how both these, only, I only really follow really, in any sort of way, um, as far as cat things go, these two Instagram things. I might actually occasionally look at other things, and but I basically just follow those two cat things and some and other things. You know, I'm not really one into watching cat videos and kitten videos and stuff. But for some reason, I just felt like I needed to have some nice things to watch on Instagram. So I and these people in the Chicago black cat seem to be very nice, and Suki, um, the people in that are very nice, and I've sort of. I just sort of think, well, it's bad that they bought a, a highly bred cat, Suki being a highly bred cat, but I just sort of thought, well, anyway, it's, it's a really amazing how they take her around all over the world and there's these beautiful photos. So anyway, it's amazing though that they both had these near death thing or death sort of experiences uh, in the last probably week or so. And, uh, and to watch all these people who I see as potential vegans because they've got the seed of veganism within them because they recognize the sentience in Suki or they recognize the sentience in Makita or Dahlia or that sweet little kitten who didn't make it. They recognize that and all those people who recognize that sentience would recognize the sentience if they lived with a little pig or a little goat or some other animal, they would recognize the wonderful um, individualness of those animals and that they have likes and dislikes and everything. And they would see that there is no difference. The same with chickens and the same with aquatic animals, even though aquatic animals may not display any signs that we recognize of emotion. They don't have to be like us to deserve our, um, to deserve our moral consideration, to, to deserve the right not to be used as property. They don't need to be like us to do that. So anyway, you know, this is why veganism is so important because um, it's a, we have to end our moral compartmentalization of these set of animals are special and then the other animals are not. They're property and they're things for us to use. We have to end that because it's, 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 we're telling ourselves a lie. We're telling ourselves, um, we're telling ourselves fibs because we, it's convenient for us to do so. Because we, we want to use them, because we can use them, because society has told us that they are things. Even though we can see, there are times where we can see they obviously are not like these animals that we eat and the, the, the secretions that we drink from them and all that. We can see these animals are not things. We can see that they're sentient. I've seen people cheering on cows that have gotten away from slaughterhouses and so forth, things like that. People, you know, can see, know these cows and other animals are sentient, but we just try to ignore their sentience and it takes a lot of effort to ignore obvious sentience. So anyway, it just never ceases to amaze me when I see um, all these people outpouring of grief over these sweet sentient beings. And I think, 
all these potential vegans. You know, they have veganism, the vegan ethic in them already. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So please click the like button if you like the content. Please subscribe and hit the notifications bell. Otherwise, you don't receive the, um, the notifications of when I drop a video. And please um, leave comments. I always enjoy comments. And please consider going vegan. Check out my website, howtogovegan.org. It's a comprehensive vegan resource in podcast form. Please check it out. I think you'll find it very beneficial. If you have any questions about veganism, please don't hesitate to contact me. So thanks so much for watching. My name is Trish Roberts. You're watching Faint Signals from Vega. Till next time, bye for now.